The United States Department of Defense has selected the Australian Hypersonics launch system for testing the next generation of hypersonic aircraft. Hypersonics was selected ahead of 63 other entrants by the Defense Innovations Unit to develop its start AE scramjet aircraft under the Hypersonic and High Cadence Airborne Testing Capabilities or HICAT-1 program. The Australian design is capable of flying at well over seven times the speed of sound. The speed of sound, or Mach 1, is 340 metres per second at sea level. This program is designed to develop long-range hypersonic aircraft, their communications, navigation, guidance and control systems, and all the technology needed to detect and track them. The mission calls for aircraft capable of operating above speeds of Mach 5 with a manoeuvrable and non-ballistic flight profile and being able to fly for at least three minutes duration in near-constant flight conditions, repeatable at short intervals. Now, hypersonics claim their Dart AE can do all of that and do it above Max 7, thereby far exceeding the HiCat 1 specifications. The Dart AE has a range of around 1,000 kilometres that equates to just 400 seconds of flight time, carrying a 10 kilogram modular payload. It's slated to undergo its first test launch next year. Australia has been leading world research into hypersonic scramjet engines for over a quarter of a century. That's one of the reasons why the United States wanted us in the AUKUS agreement. The University of Queensland Centre for Hypersonics, led by Dr Alan Paul, were the first team in the world to successfully fly a scramjet engine, even beating NASA's X-43A. Paul and colleagues developed and flight-tested their supersonic air-breathing scramjet engines under the HiShot program. High shot used scramjets attached to the nose of Terry Orion Mark 70 sounding rockets, which were then launched from the Woomera rocket range in outback South Australia. The historic first successful scramjet test flight was back in July 2002, when a scramjet powered up and propelled itself in flight for several seconds. When the mission reached a speed of Mach 7.6 and an altitude of 314 kilometres attached to the sounding rocket, the scramjet vehicle was released, changing its course and trajectory and returning to the Earth. It then ignited its scramjet engine and undertook powered flight once back in the atmosphere. The whole experimental flight from launch to landing only took about 10 minutes, a small amount of time, but an event which changed history. The ultimate aim of the High Shot program is to develop a single stage to orbit launch system. See, scramjets, or air-breathing supersonic combustion ramjets, have no moving parts, with the engine's design compressing incoming air and then injecting compressed liquid hydrogen propellant through a combustion chamber at supersonic speeds. As the air flows, it burns the hydrogen, giving off an exhaust of water vapour. The scramjet engine is lighter than conventional jet engines and a lot simpler. And by adding an oxidizer, once the air gets too thin, the scramjet can also operate in space, thereby attaining single stage to orbit. Now, if scramjets prove successful, they have the potential to considerably lower the costs of launching a satellite into orbit. The hypersonics announcement follows news that New South Wales-based company Quickstep, together with the University of New South Wales and their HypeX project, have been selected by the Australian Department of Defence to work on new types of materials which would be needed for the next generation of hypersonic weapons and aircraft. Of course, rockets and missiles have been flying at hypersonic speeds ever since the start of the space age. But the key of what we're talking about here involves being able to maintain those speeds in the atmosphere, where friction can heat up surfaces to many thousands of degrees, and also to be sufficiently manoeuvrable in mid-air flight so as to avoid being intercepted or detected. This is space-time.